Welcome to Georgia Wrestling Now, a production brought to you by GeorgiaWrestlingHistory.com, where we bring you the latest news and information on the local scene in Georgia and around the Southeast region, as well as interviews with the newsmakers. And now, the GWH Radio Network presents Georgia Wrestling Now. Welcome to Georgia Wrestling Now. This is Jonathan Williams of WrestlingWithPopCulture.com, joined, as always, by Team All You Can Eat's Matt Hankins and the human hand grenade Danny Only. Hi. Hey, Danny. I figured I'd go for the gayest intro I could. What's happening, people? I like it. <laughs> so it works. Gayer every week. <laughs> They're spreading their agenda. Yes, their agenda of <laughs> matching shoes and pastel colors. <laughs> Apparently, it's caught on to the jagged edge. Oh, did you see that too? <laughs> <clears throat> yes. We'll leave, we'll, so. leave in, we'll leave that behind closed doors, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's how he would prefer it. For now. <laughs> <laughs> So well, speaking of Jagged Edge, it was a weekend of wrestling without Danny only or the Jagged Edge because you were both yeah, doing other activities. <clears throat> but um, I guess one thing we need to talk about, and I was thinking we could probably get feedback from our listeners about this, is July 23rd, I believe it is, Raw is supposed to go to a three-hour format every week, which means we should probably not start at 8 o'clock on Mondays anymore. So um, for those who actually listen to us live on Monday nights as part of their Monday night wrestling ritual, let us know if you would prefer if we go to 7 o'clock on Mondays or if we switch to Tuesday nights so as not to compete with Monday Night Raw. I believe the three of us are all leaning towards Monday nights, or at least Matt and I. <clears throat> Yeah, you might have to you might have to do a couple of these with me in the gym, but I'll still call in. But if we go to seven, then yeah, either one, man, I'm cool. Just let the people let the people uh, chime in and tell you what they want. Power. I'll let John Laurinaitis decide. Yeah, you say that again, I'm gonna punch you in the dick. Don't let him decide anything. Oh God. <laughs> So it's uh, so, so was uh, it a good weekend, the guys that saw wrestling? John, Matt? It was a good weekend. Um, right. UCW did not do a show on Saturday night at Hiram High School. Here, um, <laughs> <laughs> That's, that is a shock. I cannot believe that UCW did <laughs> yeah. With the it was canceled. record. <laughs> it was canceled <laughs> Friday afternoon. Oh, oh well, at least there was something. Must have been the bird. <laughs> It was something. But um, other than that, uh, there was a good show, the last of the 1030 shows at Academy Theater for Empire, and a uh, great Porterdale show for PCW the following night, and then, of course, hello? Oh, Brian, I'm sorry. Mom. For <laughs> Jonathan, I'm I mean, it wasn't the best, but 
guess Daniel Bryan and CM Punk was good, but that was to be expected. Um, yeah, of course. The women's match wasn't bad. What? I don't remember <laughs> what else what else there was really aside from that uh what happened at the end. Yeah. With <clears throat> Cody and uh Cody and Christian was, you know, it was, it was a serviceable match, I guess. Oh it was yeah. A bit of a surprise. I've never seen a heel, uh, a face turn happen in the middle of a pay per view with no story bookended in either way. <laughs> he enters the battle royal as the same heel character and then just, ah, uh, we'll turn you now. <laughs> Wait, you said you never saw a, a heel turn happen in the middle of a pay per view without a story? <laughs> without a story of some fashion. Is that what about Stone, Stone Cold and Bret Hart? Well, that, Stone Cold went into that match as a hardcore heel. He came out. He did. Yeah, I guess you said I stand corrected. But I want to touch on two topics. I want to touch on two things before our guest comes to call in because uh, for for you guys that don't know, I'm telling you, you're you're definitely in for a treat uh, with Mr. Saint Laurent. All right, he's he's somebody I haven't seen eye to eye with uh, the whole time that I've been in wrestling. I agree with a lot of what he says. I disagree with a lot more of what he says. But the dude has definitely made an impact in what he's done in wrestling, and he is uh, absolutely somebody who, uh, when he's not around, whether it be on the boards or uh, at a show, uh, his presence is definitely missed, whether that be a good thing or a bad thing. So I'm pretty sure he'll have a lot to to talk about. So before he does, I want to touch on two topics. One, uh, if you're a wrestling company and you're making flyers for your show, you should probably (laughs) not have your elementary school make the flyers for your show. Um, you should probably reach out to a wrestling fan and say, hey, can you work with anything to make these cool flyers? And if they say yes, here's the novel concept. Let them make flyers and then give them free tickets to your show if you're even charging people to come to your shit show. But don't put crap posters online and promote your shitty little show because all you do is make everybody else look bad. And if you're making the same crap flyers you have for the past five years, stop fucking making flyers. Go home. Take your computer, throw it out the window, and stop making flyers. Because nobody gives a shit about your show when the flyer looks like crap. At least if the flyer looks good, they might say, hey, these people don't look like a pile of turd. And then they'll come to the show and see it. And then you've done the bait and switch because you actually are a pile of turd. And they'll sit there and watch it because they've already driven an hour and a half and spent eight bucks to come into your shitty show. Secondly, if you're a dude in the wrestling business and you've got your chick in the wrestling business, you're an idiot, and you need to keep her on a really, really, really tight leash because I know from personal experience, and I've seen the pictures, there's a certain wrestler who frequents the Georgia and Alabama area whose chick has been sending a friend of mine pictures of her tits and saying how much she wants to bang them and get banged by him. So keep your women the fuck out of wrestling or just get ready to deal with it. That's it. I'm off my soapbox. I'm making pizza now. All right. Well, in response to your points, your description of Mr. St. Laurent uh, could be interchangeable with our other guest um, tonight, which is the Wicked Nemesis, another person you have a little bit of history with, Danny. Um, I'm guessing you have seen eye to eye with him and not seen eye to eye with him. Um, Everything you said about the other guy could be said about him, too. So it should be an interesting show. On your second point, I heard uh, Championship Wrestling Overload has a show this weekend, <laughs> as do several other promotions. Um, one in particular that looks interesting is Elite Wrestling Atlanta, I guess it is, EWA and Griffin. They've got Gunner, um, Luke Gallows versus Jimmy Rave, Kyle Matthews versus Frankie Valentine, Pandora, Mason, lots of great local talent on that show, and that's Saturday in Griffin at the Taylor Street Gym. And then Peach State Wrestling Alliance will have their big show, but we'll talk more about that later when Rick, Wicked Nemesis slash Enoch Sarian slash what other names he goes by calls in. But he's is calling later, so... Added, is it true they added Davey and Kyle to that show? Um, it's very possible. I did hear that, of course, they're going to be at... Academy Theater on Friday, and I believe they're going to be at Rampage on Sunday, so I would imagine they would work some other show on Saturday. But I don't see it on the poster, so I'm looking at it online. And for those listening who doesn't know who he means, he means uh, Ring of Honor World Champion. 
well, former Ring of Honor world champ, Davey Richards and uh, Kyle O'Reilly, and I'd imagine Tony Cozzini because they're kind of a group package. Yeah, they're all going to be uh, in town, so, yes. So how about Kevin Steen beating Davey Richards for the uh, Ring of Honor world title? Yeah, I haven't seen it, but it's definitely something I want to check out. So I saw it on Twitter because Kevin Steen Twitter's awesomeness. <laughs> it was it was a hard match to find because they had terrible trouble with the feed that night. But I've I've scoured the internet for it and have not come up with it yet. So, but I would like to see it. But it, it kind of felt like that was inevitable. Steen has just been a, on a steamroller since he came back. Yeah, and I mean. A lot of people don't like him, but I think that's kind of the point with him. <laughs> so I believe we have our first guest uh, on the line, because it looks like it's a Florida area code. But let's find out. Is this Mr. St. Laurent? Yeah, how's it going, guys? All right, how are you? Good, good. So uh, Danny was telling us a little bit about you just a moment ago. I don't believe you were on the line yet, but... Uh, Regardless of his his personal dealings with you, he he made it clear that you definitely have a lot to say and uh, make things interesting in wrestling. But I was looking at your website. It looks like you do the same thing in, in other areas, um, such as rock and roll and and elsewhere. So, what is uh what are you all about? For those you know, a lot of us in Georgia may not have ever seen you before. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been quite a while since I've wrestled in Georgia, probably not since the uh, Combat Fusion and World One South days. I guess what I'm all about is uh, trying to merge different art forms and put it into one package. You know, I've spent so many years of my life working in wrestling, working in music, uh, working as a spoken word artist, and I I try to take the concept of you know, what would it be like if there was somebody working in all these different industries and they were the same person 24 hours a day? And and I think my inspiration in a lot of ways was probably Andy Kaufman, who was first best known as an actor, and then people started to catch on and be like, well, he, he's also this real-life personality that, that's kind of odd and interesting. And, and so suddenly he was able to plug himself into non-acting situations, whether it was wrestling or, or stand-up comedy. So I, I, I guess what I try to bring to the table is that you, you never know where I'm, what I'm going to do. You never know where I'm going to show up. And I'm the same person in wrestling as I am out of wrestling. All right. Well, I understand you a couple of years back, you had some kind of um, altercation. I don't know if it was... Twitter or what, but Axl Rose wasn't happy with something you did. Is that right? Well, yeah, actually, I've, I've got a long history with, with Guns N' Roses as far as uh, for people that are really in the music and are familiar with Guns N' Roses. You know, they had this record that they were working on for for so many years, 10, 15 years, working on this new album, and a lot of people thought it was never going to come out. A lot of people thought it didn't exist, and I saw it as an opportunity to where if I could be the man that got my hands on that album and, and released it, uh, that that would probably be something that would generate a lot of attention. And certainly it did. I, I think that was something that caused more of a stir overseas than it did in the U.S. But, yeah, I, I was the guy that leaked Chinese democracy. <laughs> All right. Well, and, uh, that, that's not a line of bullshit. I can vouch for that for anybody who's doubting it. Uh, like you said, when, uh, when, he, when he let out the show, he only said, despite uh, my personal... Uh, feelings towards you, and I told him before you called in, uh, a lot of the things that you've said and done, I agree with. A lot more of them uh, I disagree with, but that's just difference in opinion. But uh, there's definitely a few things that I can say for him. Is uh, He doesn't say anything unless he means it or is going to do it, and he's not a guy who needs to uh, brag about bullshit. Uh, you know, there's no stories made up. It's exactly exactly what he says and how he says it is, is well, pretty much well, why don't we out. talk about, can, can you give me some examples of things I've done or said that you didn't agree with? Uh, yeah, mainly just telling me I sucked and it, that I didn't agree with it at the time, <laughs> but looking back on it, I actually did suck. But, you know, at the time, I just wanted to tell you to fuck off because I don't suck. Same as anybody who gets told that they're terrible. They don't want to hear it. But, 
looking back on it, I, I do realize that I was pretty bad, but uh, not anymore. So I guess I can I can deal with that, you know. And, and I would hope also that, you know, a few years more into the business than you were at that time, that, that maybe you would realize that if somebody even took the time to single you out and, and, and pick apart what you were doing or, or say that something needed to improve or that this sucks or that sucks, I, I probably wouldn't have done that if I didn't see talent there to begin with. It, it, it wouldn't be worth my time to scour the Internet just randomly telling people that they suck. But I, right. I saw something in you. I, I saw a work ethic. I saw a desire. And I just wanted to try to maybe open your mind up to look at things in a different way, which I think maybe you kind of have on your own. But uh, I would hope that looking back on it now, you would realize that I wouldn't just tell you that you were sucked to be uh, to be an asshole. It, it was, you know, I always saw potential in you, and I have been very happy to see how you've progressed over the years. Right on. Well, I, I remember something specifically – uh, there, there was a, an exchange. I don't know if it was verbal typed or whatever, but there was an exchange where you said something, and uh, I had to be a smartass, and I said, and it's something I've always stuck to that I actually quoted Captain Jack Sparrow when you said, "You're probably the worst wrestler I've ever seen," and I was like, "Yeah, but you have seen me," and it, it was like that, that kind of chimed through, you know. There was like, I, at the time, obviously, you don't think about it, but uh, you know, if, if somebody takes the time, you know, to, to address you and be like, that, "That's your." fucking terrible, you know, they're at least paying attention to you, so yeah, I uh, definitely appreciate it, because negative criticism is, is uh, just as good as positive criticism sometimes. All right, what, what other misconceptions can we get out of the way? Give me a list. What are we, what are we going through tonight, fellas? Oh, man. <laughs> I have a question, actually. Your logo looks like um, someone put black ink on their butt and sat on something, and then there's a red dot underneath it. What is that? Um, well, I, I think that's part of the charm of my logo is that you can ask 100 people to tell you what they see when they look at it, and you'd probably get 100 different responses. That's actually my self-portrait. Uh, I very commonly wear large, round, black sunglasses. So what you're seeing there is my sunglasses and my mouth. I, I also wear a lot of cherry chapsticks, and my lips are often very red. So so that's what that is. That That's a drawing I made of my face, but certainly what you saw there is just as valid as my interpretation. <laughs> so it's like a uh, a psychology test. So yeah, I think, an test. I think there's an element of that to it for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I understand you also host a uh, wrestling radio show or podcast, um, among other things. Uh, what is your What is your show about? Yeah, I'm actually hosting two shows right now. I host MLW Radio, which comes out every Thursday on MLW.com. And then I also co-host MLW's Conan Show, which comes out every Monday on MLW.com. And MLW Radio is really me just sitting down and doing lengthy interviews with different people who have worked in the wrestling industry. We've recently had everyone from J.J. Dillon. So we actually tracked down the Ultimate Warrior, which it was very difficult to get him uh, in, in the coming weeks, we're going to have MVP. We're going to have Billy Corgan, the lead singer of the Smashing Pumpkins, who is uh, he has his own wrestling company now. Larry Zabis is going to be on, on the show. And then the Conan show is really just me and Conan uh, just kind of chopping it up and talking about whatever, whatever has inspired Conan that week. I mean, Conan certainly has a lot to say. He's been in the business since 1986. He's been all over the world. He, he's pretty much the top dog in Mexico right now running AAA. So, uh, you know, me and Conan, that show doesn't have the same structure as MLW Radio does. The Conan show is kind of just anything goes. Now, I know, I know uh, MLW, when did MLW close its doors? MLW actually ceased uh, operations at the beginning of 2004. So it's been very interesting to see the reaction uh, to the pseudo resurrection of a, a brand that's been dead for eight years. I mean, I really didn't know if anybody was even going to remember it. Right, because I, I got I got down to Florida in June of 2004 and started training with Buck and Steve around a year after that, maybe a little less. And I, you know, I heard all these people just talk about how great MLW was, and you know, they had MLW had a lot of just the top guys. 
uh, on the Indies, and I don't, I don't remember the structure, I don't remember the matches or how it worked, but there were some also just some really big names that came through there. Um, so for those who, who yeah, were I listening, mean, had ML- no idea. MLW was very lucky to have a working relationship with multiple promotions in Japan, a working relationship with promotions in Mexico. So you had a great mix of talent that you probably haven't seen since. I mean, when you, when you look at companies as far as outside of WWE and TNA, the, the caliber of roster that MLW had, I don't think has been touched since. And I think that's maybe why so many fans still remember it so fondly. You know, the battles between Terry Funk and Steve Carino or the War Games match or Satoshi Kojima from all Japan coming in and uh, all, the, all the guys from all over the world, I, I, you know, Honestly, if you were going to try to put that type of roster together, it would be so expensive, and then maybe that's why MLW doesn't run shows anymore. But I, I really yeah. haven't seen anybody able to recreate that. Yeah, that's that's definitely something that's lacking uh, in a lot of places. I mean, you you know, you can see all these shows where they'll hire a name to come in, and then the rest of the roster is not exactly the best around. Uh, then you got other companies that are, you know, featuring featuring somewhat subpar guys and then other guys who are just looking to break out to the next level. But finding a roster that's just packed with, with talent that good, it's just definitely a rarity. Well, I noticed uh, in some of the pictures you sent me, the um, the one with SoCal Val, you're wearing a title belt of some sort. So I'm assuming you've been, or maybe you are currently a champion somewhere. Yeah, actually, I mean, that, that photo was a little older. I think at that time I was the, the Florida heavyweight champion. But, yeah, I mean, he, there's so many companies out there. There's so many title belts. You're, you're bound to win a few along the way if you stick around long enough, I, I would assume. Um, probably the, the most notable title I won was the AWA World Tag Team Championship, which is actually the original World Tag Team Championship of pro wrestling. It goes back to... 1957, it, it predates the WWE tag title, it predates the NWA tag titles. Uh, so, you know, probably to me that was the most special because I'm, I'm such a wrestling historian and, and to uh, have both the honor and, and I guess the responsibility of trying to carry on a, a title with that type of history and, and trying to keep it alive, you know, probably a decade or two after most people even realize it exists anymore. That, that to me, has been the thing that I've focused on the most when it comes to titles. I mean, uh, Florida titles and, and stuff like that, that kind of comes and goes. But the AWA World Tag Team Championship and the history that it has definitely means the most to me. Now, okay. I've, got a, I've got a question that I'm sure somebody might be asking right now. They're saying, wait a minute, the AWA doesn't exist anymore, technically. So how do you? What, what is your opinion on that as far as that still being, quote, unquote, a legitimate world title with, the the, liter- the legal aspects of AWA not existing. Well, I, I think if you look at the history of pro wrestling, the, the history uh, of pro wrestling is littered with examples of championships continuing on even after the company they came from has ceased to exist. I mean, even if you look at the origins of the NWA title, splintering from the National Wrestling Association, w- which was shut down in favor of the National Wrestling Alliance, uh, there's there's countless examples of that throughout history. So to me, it, it's the basis of being a champion is the man who beat the man. If the basis of being a champion is, is having something that has some credibility and some history to it. I've never been interested in, in a, you know, someone can open a company tomorrow and invent some title. That doesn't mean something to me. What is the history of the title? What does it stem from? So to me, there's never been any dispute, if you look at the history of the business, that the AWA tag title was the real world tag team championship and the NWA heavyweight title was the real world heavyweight championship. And, and it would, I guess would be open to interpretation as far as what would be the real world junior heavyweight championship. I would say probably the NWA, but you know, titles that have been invented in the last few decades doesn't mean anything to me. The, the sport had a structured uh, hierarchy. You can go back uh, many decades ago to trace what are the real world titles of wrestling. And I hope that, you know, 50 years from now, there's still an NWA heavyweight champion and there's still an AWA tag champion. How often do you guys defend those titles? You know, at this point, maybe once or twice a year. You know, I don't really wrestle that much anymore. And, I, I you know, hopefully sometime soon I'll be able to say I'm never wrestling again. Uh, so, 
I think the only thing that even keeps me wrestling is the fact that we still haven't lost the titles, but I, I think it, at some point we will, and when that happens, I don't think I'll feel like the responsibility to have to still climb into the ring. You know, there, there's better ways to, to make a living than getting punched in the face and thrown on your head. And so, you know, I'm 29 now. Uh, I've been working full-time in wrestling since I was 15 years old. I, I hope to still be working in wrestling when I'm 85 years old. But as far as me stepping into the ring and, and lacing up the boots, hopefully that's something I won't be doing much longer. Right on. You sound like you and got who, your history down, down pretty well. Is there a time or maybe a promotion that you look back on and you think that was the true golden age of all of this? Is there is there one time frame you can point to and say that if I was going to do it any time in, in history, that would been when I want to be wrestling? Well, I, I think to me probably the, the, the pinnacle of wrestling is right before – the wrestling promoters and the boxing promoters kind of splinter because you really don't have to go back that far. You really only have to go back maybe 60 years where in most areas of the country, the, the local wrestling promoter and the local boxing promoter, they were the same person. I mean, Vince McMahon's grandfather uh, was a boxing promoter and the, the two sports were kind of controlled hand in hand. You, you look at modern day boxing and, and the world boxing association, who crowns champions, and, and there's a few other organizations that do as well. If you go back to the early days when they were the National Boxing Association, and they were actually the same company as the National Wrestling Association, which the modern NWA splintered out of, that, that time period before, you know, when the boxing promoters were manipulating things a little bit, but not enough to where the public figured out that everything was completely phony and the wrestling promoters wanted to manipulate things a little more than they had been thinking that that would lead to more uh, dollar bills in their wallet. And you have this philosophical split where the boxing promoters and the wrestling promoters can't agree on how much corruption and how much influence they're going to have over their sports. And they just, there's like this fork in the road and they go completely separate ways. I would have loved to have been involved back then, back when you could still, the public was perceiving pro wrestling as a legitimate sport on par with boxing. And, and boxing was also the associate, probably the biggest sport in our country, maybe second right behind baseball. That, I would have been, loved to have been around during that time period. We're just fighting in general with such a huge part of our culture. All right. Well, well um, that face. <laughs> <laughs> what other promotions do you do you currently compete for? And where I mean, I, actually where do you defend AWA titles? Like I guess Danny kind of touched on it a minute ago, but since that promotion technically doesn't exist, who who owns those titles? Well, since the the AWA finally shut its doors, which I think probably would have been maybe around 2008, when, when the, the lawsuit was finally wrapped up between WWE and AWA. I mean, it's since then, Larry Zbysko was still the heavyweight champion and was defending that all over the country. He actually recently lost his claim to the Sheik, and the Sheik was the NWA champion that had been stripped. So the, the Sheik actually has the, the lineal claim to both the NWA and the AWA world heavyweight titles. Uh, and then um, my partner and I continued to defend the tag titles all over the country, you know, West Virginia, Nevada, Georgia, Florida, uh, Minnesota. I mean, we, we've we been everywhere with those belts. And do I think I'll still be doing that five years from now? I hope not. But I, there's still a lot of promoters that, that have an interest in the history of the business and like the idea of booking the original – tag team champions of wrestling. And, and, but I think that as more time goes on, that kind of stuff means less and less to people. I mean, certainly being the NWA champion now means less than it did 20 years ago or even 10 years ago when you could headline in Japan just based off that belt alone. So I, I do think the more time goes on, the more pro wrestling kind of becomes a cartoon. A lot of the, the history and the legacy of the business will certainly die off. Do you think you'll still be involved your... with involved with wrestling even after you're actively not participating? Do I think I'll still be involved in, in the industry? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, even if it's just out of necessity, because this is how I've always made my living, you know, working behind the scenes for different wrestling companies. 
And, you know, I don't have a college degree. My resume is just filled up and down with, you know, wrestling companies. So I, I don't really know what I would do with my life if it wasn't doing something involved in some way in either wrestling or MMA or boxing behind the scenes or behind the microphone. So, I mean, the, the fact that I, I still wrestle occasionally, to me, has nothing to do, you know, most people in independent wrestling, they've got their real-life job outside of wrestling, and it, it just so happens that my real-life job outside of wrestling is in wrestling. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I might not be the exception to the rule, but my, my in-ring career to me was always completely separate from my work as a commentator, or as a matchmaker. Uh, I've always been able to mentally separate them because, you know, if, if I'm doing commentary for Ring of Honor and I'm acting like the complete insane lunatic that I act like on the independent Florida wrestling scene, well, you know, I, I would have been fired after one show. So I've always had to kind of ma make this gap in my head and, and, and separate the two because, you know, Mr. St. Laurent, the, the guy that's telling Danny only that he sucks and, and trying to pick fights on the Internet, um, I, can't, I can't be that in all aspects of the business because it really wouldn't make any sense. I, uh, we got sidetracked a little bit. The reason I was bringing up the, uh, the MLW legacy is um, now, forgive me for my naivety here, my ignorance, but Court Bauer was one of the, I guess, founding fathers of MLW. Is that correct? Yeah, Court, Court Bauer is the owner of MLW, has been the owner of MLW since it opened in, you know, 2002. And for, I mean, some people, that name might ring the bell because after MLW, he went on to be a creative executive over at WWE for several years. And then after leaving WWE, you know, he, he's worked in a lot of non-wrestling projects, but he, he always retained, you know, the ownership of MLW. He still owns all the intellectual property. And for people that haven't seen it, he, he'd like them to see it. And, and so, you know, part of the idea of this is to digitize the, the tape library and get that out on the Internet so people can watch it. Is there any talk of ever trying to uh, uh, resurrect the brand, or is he just going to let it stay where it is and keep, let it keep the legacy that it had? Well, I mean, is it, is it something that the, the boys talk about? Yeah, I get asked literally 50 times a day, hey, is MLW coming back? Hey, is MLW coming back? Because people you know, know that I've kind of been like court's uh, lieutenant, I guess you could say, for, God, it's almost been a decade at this point. Um uh, that that is not the plan. This, this is a, a digital project. Uh, could the tapes end up airing again on television in certain markets across uh, across the world? Yeah, they could. We want to get the tape library out there. Certainly, the radio shows have taken off like you know well beyond our expectations. We thought at first we'd we'd just be interviewing people from MLW's history so that the old fans would have something to listen to, and then before you know it, we're you know the, the shows are really taken off and, and we're getting listeners from all over the world. Um, if it was going to come back, that would be above my pay grade. I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't know it anyways. But that, that's certainly not the plan right now. Right. On. Hey, uh, I don't know if you mentioned this earlier. I don't think I heard you say it. But who is your tag team partner? Uh, my tag team partner is the the very controversial Chase and Rance from a VH1 Tool Academy, um, and he's certainly gotten some attention since then from different legal issues that he's had. Uh, so, you know, it, it's made it difficult to defend those titles maybe as much as he would like because, you know, he's still wrestling all the time. I barely wrestle. If we never defended them ever again, I, I think I'd be okay with that. So he, he kind of sets that stuff up and then, you know, lets me know when I'm supposed to show up. And, uh, I, you know, I, I stumble in the building and kind of fake my way through it. But, you know, Chasen is still wrestling all over the place. And, you know, he, he's a talented guy, but... You know, he seems to have a penchant for rubbing people the wrong way, and I'm sure Danny was, has heard stories from other people. And So, you know, he, he kind of runs the ship when it comes to the in-ring stuff, and then I worry about the out-of-the-ring stuff. Okay. Well, we have to uh, take a quick commercial break and get ready for our next guest, the Wicked Nemesis. Mr. St. Laurent, you're welcome to stay on the line if you'd like, but uh, we'll be back in just a moment. Georgia Wrestling fans, you're going to want to make your plans to be at Johnny G's the first, third, and fifth Sunday of every month, 2 p.m. bell time, for Rampage Pro Wrestling television taping. And fans, if you're in Middle Georgia, make sure that you watch Rampage Pro Wrestling on Fox 24, Saturday, 9 a.m., on the My 41.2 
Saturday at 10 p.m., Cox Communications Cable, Thursday 8, Saturday at noon, and of course, Rampage Rewind, the one-half-hour show on Cox Communications throughout the schedule. Fans, be there. Do you remember Tommy Rich? What about Ray Gunkel or Gordon Foley? Can't get those nasty Anderson brothers out of your head? Well, you can catch them again at GeorgiaWrestlingHistory.com. Who was on the first card you attended? Who was it under that mask? Remember the first Omni Spectacular or the big main events at the Bell Auditorium? That happened in Columbus on my birthday. Find out at GeorgiaWrestlingHistory.com. Whether you want to get back some of your past or maybe you just want to find pro wrestling in your area, check out GeorgiaWrestlingHistory.com. If you're hurt, get the money you deserve. If you're in pain, get the money you deserve. At Terry and Peterman, we're personal injury attorneys who take a professional, thorough approach to your accident and injury claims. Don't call some long-distance law firm or satellite office. Don't trust your claim to just anyone. For a free consultation, call the law office of Terry and Peterman today, 229-247-0386, or go online at www.terryandpeterman.com. The law offices of Terry and Peterman, making things right. This is Miss Rachel from The Empire, formerly known as Platinum Championship Wrestling. Every Friday night, The Empire presents the best in professional wrestling at the Academy Theater in Avondale State. We're also at the Masquerade every month or so. Check us out on Facebook. Just look for Platinum Championship Wrestling. And you'll get the latest details on all the hottest action from The Empire, formerly known as Platinum Championship Wrestling. We get it. That's every Friday night at the Academy Theater and at the Masquerade as well every month. We'll see you there. Welcome back to Georgia Wrestling Now. This is Jonathan Williams from WrestlingWithPopCulture.com, uh, being joined by Matt Hankins and Danny Only, as well as Mr. St. Laurent. And we are now being joined by uh, the wicked nemesis, Enoch Sarian. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing horrible, as always. How is everyone else doing? Great. <laughs> hey, uh, let me let me interrupt real quick. One of the main reasons that I wanted to bring uh, MSL onto the show uh, is because he, as I said, he's very outspoken, which I also know that the Wicked Nemesis is, and I feel that they both have very strong opinions on exactly what the fuck is wrong with wrestling today. Um, I I didn't want to dive right into that with MSL immediately because of the fact that I thought it would lend some credibility if people knew who he was and what he's done as opposed to just some dude piping off the mouth about what's wrong with wrestling. I'm sure most of the people listening today already know who Wicked Nemesis is. Um, so after you give him a minute to reintroduce himself to, to familiarize the sheep with who he is, uh, if we can, jump right into my favorite subject, uh, what is wrong with wrestling, especially on the indie level today, that would be pretty awesome. Sure. Well, I'll go ahead. Well, uh, yeah, who, give, who gives a shit who I am? Let's just go. I, I'll tell you what's wrong with it, Danny. And I'm sure everybody, it's people that have no fucking business being in the business running stuff running power moves in the business. If you're calling shots, let me tell you what, if you've only been in the business a year, or or if you've been in the business five fucking years, and you've only been in one promotion, and you only do stuff on just like once a month, you have no fucking right to walk up to somebody and go, hey guys, you know what you should do? I don't give a shit what you should do. You should fucking stay out of the business that we're in. Okay? That's what's wrong with business. When you have people who have never taken a single fucking bump in their life, uh, somebody that has never stepped foot in the ring besides to grab uh, grab a microphone, calling shots, and putting people like, well, this person should go over and this person should go over. You don't fucking know. That's what's wrong with the business, in my humble opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think that's right. You know, you got people who are who say, yeah, I'm a wrestler. And it's funny, I read somewhere where they, they uh, you can't ask anymore how long have you been working. You have to ask how many matches you've had because – I've been wrestling right almost at six years. Um, there were times when I was in Florida where, where I was wrestling three or four times a week. There's times when I was up here where I was only wrestling once a week. So I couldn't tell you how many matches I had. I know it's over 500, I think. No, probably not. But 
I know I've been working pretty constantly at least twice a week for the past four years. So, you know, that's, what, uh, 200, 100, and 200 something in the past two years. So I'm uh, doing okay. But you got, like, just like you said, you got guys who wrestle for one company uh, once a month, and they're the big dog there, so they don't ever want to leave and go anywhere else. And they're more comfortable being a big dog or a big fish in a small pond where they're too scared to go somewhere else and test themselves. And they can spend the rest of their careers on the outlaws on, on, and on the indies. That's not me. When I got into the business six and a half years ago, I didn't want to spend my time on the indies. I wanted to go and be on WrestleMania. That's what I wanted to do. That's no offense to any other promotion. That's no offense to any of the promotions that I've been in. But that's just me. I've always thought big. Okay? Going into the business, I wanted to be Bobby the Brain Heenan. As I got into the business and made my own, I realized you can't be the next whatever. You have to be the first of your own. And it takes people years to figure that out. But, Danny, you know, I made my name on outlaws, on independents, managing who I could, trying to do this, trying to do that. I, I paid my dues. I busted my ass. I put up rings. I put up rings and promotions, dress, dress to impress. I'm talking about, you know how I come. I come dressed as a champion, and I've taken down rings and put up rings. That's what you have to do. And if you've never experienced that, if you've never experienced that, then, you, then you'll never know the business. You are a weakened warrior. That's not me. Danny, that's not you. I'm sure that's not uh, anybody, that, anybody that wants to be something in the business. That's not them. Okay, it's plain and simple. If you want to be, as you said, a big fish in a small pond, that's fine. And, and by the way, you know, uh, really quick, happy birthday to Notorious B.I.G. We do miss you. But they don't know what wrestling is. They don't know what it's like to have and pay dues. That's what's wrong with the business and several people. And also, you guys talked about constructive criticism. If you don't tell somebody what they're doing wrong, they're never going to know. The first two years that I was in the business, Danny, you know my brother, Ryan Bishop. People were so yep. fucking scared of him that they wouldn't say shit to me. They were like, yeah, great job, great job, well, good, great job, yeah, fantastic job. Because everybody was so scared to say something that would piss him off. And I was, I was still in heat and had no fucking idea. You know who told me, who, who really helped me? Johnny Swinger, Murder one. Jeff Bailey, Murder One. And still, I'm still learning with the Ron Bishop. Well, even though he's retired, the whole time that I was with him, calm like a bomb, Pandora. Hell, CJ, awesome. J Rod, I never thought I'd say that. Yes, I managed J Rod. Uh, Crew Jones. I mean, all these guys, all these guys. Oh, oh, Danny, you'll love this. I also made, uh, also made uh, J Rod admit in front of Mike Jackson, everybody uh, at Peach State, that I was the greatest manager alive because I said, this guy hates me. We legitimately hate each other, and he admitted to it, so made my day. But let's talk about getting arrested for inciting a riot. Have you guys ever heard <laughs> of getting arrested for inciting a riot? Jonathan Williams, you were there. Matt Hankins, you I were was. there. These motherfuckers well, come they, and arrested me. They came and arrested got you, bro. me. They came and got you. Big Bay Dolls I wasn't even there. They came and got you. <laughs> <laughs> I was at Alabama Wrestling Alliance in Munford, Alabama, when the riot broke out. Okay, Simon Sermon got on here and pussyfooted around what happened. He kind of told what happened. What happened is that the fans started screaming whenever it was decided that there was going to be a no-disqualification match between uh, what was then called the Tribulation. Oh, and kudos to the PWA fans. I have, I have kids that are barely old enough to get into school telling me, I hope you fucking die. I hope your dick rots off from fucking God Ray, you fucking faggot. And I'm like, you do realize that Simon Sermon's a homosexual. And how dare you? Do you kiss your mom with that mouth? But yet they have a problem with, with us being called the tribulation. Well. And that's completely cute. Okay? That's what happens. And you know you this. And you know this for a fact, Danny Oman. I am very picky how I use the MOD label. The Merchants of Death are like the Illuminati. It's like the Bilderberg. It's like the 322, the skull and bones of professional wrestling. It's not just fucking something you throw around. The Merchants of Death is not just something like, hey, I want to be an MOD member today. No, that's not how it works. Danny only busted his ass. Murder one and Ryan Bishop didn't want him to be an MOD member. But Johnny Slaughter and I said yes. Same thing with Corey Hollis. Nobody wanted Corey Hollis to be an MOD member. These two guys busted their asses, and they made their way into the MOD. Same Thing with all of us. 
We all put our noses to the grindstone, went out every Wednesday, every Thursday, every Friday, every Saturday. Guys, how many – I've missed the, the day, the fucking day after, just, 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 just less hours, less than 24 hours after my third child was born, I was at Peach State Wrestling Alliance because that's what you fucking do. I've missed birthdays. I've missed my son's first home run in baseball. I missed his first goal. I missed all this shit because of fucking wrestling. Right now, I can't go out and I can't hit, I can't play soccer with my son because I blew up my fucking knee at GCW, a great championship wrestling in Phoenix City. That's what the business is about. It's not fucking sitting behind a desk thinking that for one second, well, I think I know what's going to go on. No, the fuck you don't. And I don't give a shit if you've managed – well, I managed, I managed 15 years ago. Who gives a shit? I trained. I trained as a wrestler. I busted my ass. I came into the business. I said, I want to be a manager. I said, okay. And they started beating the fuck out of me, started teaching me. For four months, I got my ass beat. For four months, I trained as a wrestler. Then was like, okay, now you can be a manager. Why? Because to be a great manager, because I don't want to be good. To be a great manager, you have to be – a good wrestler, okay? It boils down to this. And I hate it when the guys go out and they're like, oh, you know, they're a manager. Then they go out and they try to chain wrestle. They try to, you know, do all these, you know, flippity-floppity moves. Why? That means that when you hit somebody, when you interfere in a match, you should knock them out. You're killing yourself. And people don't see that. And it starts at the top. It's people that don't know what the fuck they're doing put other people in charge. I have some you questions for the wicked nemesis. Yes, sir. H- how old are you, sir? I'm thirty. What am I? Thirty-two. Sorry. And you and you have how many children? Three. <laughs> and how how much would you say you earn annually in the pro wrestling business? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe five, six thousand dollars a year. And and how many hours would you say you put into the business every year? Oh dear God! Yeah. <laughs> we talking about like doing? We talking about doing radio shows, going out helping people, going to shows when asked to help out, uh, driving back and forth. You know, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, all, yeah, all of that. Oh Jesus Christ, sir! Uh, I'm on the radio two times a week, so there's at least six and a half hours of radio. Uh, driving back and forth, there's at least uh, each week da, 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 at least two and a half, three hours, and you know, then time is a a lot. So I mean, if you if you did the math, do you think it would break down to probably less than minimum wage? Oh yes, sir. Of course, absolutely. So if, from if what I've heard, children, it definitely is. You're you're accruing you're accruing injuries. You're not able to play soccer with your child. Um, don't you think that maybe you should be putting your family first and, and, instead of spending so much time for so little pay and risking your no, body and pro absolutely wrestling? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And what would you and, and you know what? And you know what? My kids think this exact same way. My son wouldn't have it any other way. My wife spending forty five to an forty five minutes to an hour each each before each event, getting my hair fixed, getting my eight and a half inch mohawk done. She wouldn't have it any other way. You know right now, and this is the god honest truth, with three kids. If I got into the WWE and was on the road for three hundred days a year, my wife would be fucking ecstatic. There would be high fives throughout this house. My three-year-old may do a cartwheel, and my wife may what, do a backflip. What do you think? Flip. What do you think? What do you think the odds are that you'll be able to get a full-time position as a manager in WWE? Uh, probably slim to none, but does it matter? Well, yeah, because I'm just wondering, like, for the sake of your family, would you be better off just working a minimum wage job and spending all the money on lottery tickets? Wouldn't that be a, a wiser choice than trying to make it into WWE as a manager? Hmm. Obviously, this man has no idea who I am, and I'm sorry. No, and I'm sorry. And I'm sorry. And I'm sorry. And I'm sorry. Well, I'm, I'm, I, not I wanna, I, I'm just going off saying. the information that you gave me. You gave me your age, the amount of children you have, how much you earn a year in wrestling, and all the time that you spend. I'm just doing the basic math and wondering if it's a smart business decision. Oh, you know, well, I do have another job, so I make uh, good and well. So, well, both of you guys you have. have both of you guys have your own uh, radio shows, so that might be something you could take up on each other's shows in the near future. But um, well, Danny, we're running Danny out of time. Up, 
Danny brought up what's wrong with the wrestling business, and the problem with the wrestling business is people are in it because they're fans and not because it's a smart business decision to be in it. That, that's the problem is that the, the industry is littered with people who do it because they, they think it's cool or it makes them feel good about themselves because they're a big fan and they're marking out instead of people who say, well, I have a skill or I have an ability that would allow me to make a living doing this. And, and, and so you just have a bunch of dreamers that have infiltrated everything. And so the whole business is falling apart. Well, let me ask you something real quick. And that's, this is, again, I guess one of the things where I'm saying we kind of, we don't see exactly eye to eye. You said something earlier, Em, about how you're able, you were able to make a living off of wrestling and you're the, ex- probably one of the few exceptions and, and, you know, to the rule. Uh, do you, what do you, th- I, I see what you're saying about somebody who's, you know, not going to go anywhere, not going to get any better, not going to do anything. And they're losing their ass constantly every day, every show, every week. Uh, but, it's, it's obvious that people do not make the living wrestling that they used to. Uh, there's still some who get flown around the country to wrestle. There's still some that, that do make a very good living off of it. But then there's guys like me who, the, at the end of the day, the best I can hope for is to not lose my ass and to try to come out a little bit ahead and not be crippled, you know, when it's all said and done. But I'm also somebody who is constantly trying to get better and who is striving to get to the next level. Chances are I, I more than likely will never make it to the WWE because I'm already 32 and I'm well aware of that. Uh, but I don't think that I'm one of these guys that's just playing wrestler and marking out because I put the work in to, to get better at what I what I love doing. And I'm not. But if you, if, my you, ass. if you look at the if you look at the facts, if you if you look at your situation and you say to yourself, it's not a smart business decision to do this and to sacrifice my body that I will not be making a lucrative living doing this and you choose to do it anyways, then the, the reason for doing that would have to be because you're a mark. And so that's the problem with the business is there's not enough people who say, this is not a smart business choice, and so you know what? I'm not going to do it, even though maybe it would have been fun or cool. But does the business not die if, if dreamers stop getting into this business? I mean, I can't imagine too many people can look at, at an industry with one viable company to go work for in truth. And three, if you stretch it at the most, one place that you can go make a, a living at and say that's a that's a, a viable thing to get into. Would you say the same thing to a kid on a basketball court or a football field that, hey, you're probably not going to get drafted by the NBA or the NFL. You should just stop doing this now. Yeah, but you could you could say to a kid who maybe is in that ghetto with very few other prospects, at least there's more people who make a – way more people that make a legitimate living playing basketball – than there are as a professional wrestler. And even if they don't make it to the professional level, they still might be able to earn themselves a free education. So if you look at the odds of trying to better your life through basketball compared to bettering through your life through wrestling, there's no comparison whatsoever. And everyone has to look at their own personal circumstances. What are their prospects in life? You might have a kid in that inner city from a broken home who's living off of welfare, who that is their shot to get out of there. And even that's a long shot. But when you look at pro wrestling, when you look at guys who either, A, don't have the athletic credentials or don't have the right last name to have any shot at making it, and they do it anyways because they're a big fan, I I think our perspective on that needs to change and say, wait a second, if you're a big fan, buy a ticket, watch it on TV, don't pollute the business. And if the business dies because all that was left was dreamers, well, then let it die. I mean, there's no rule that says every industry has to live on until the end of time. I don't know how many horse and buggies are being sold every year, but I would imagine it's not many. Well, good thing that's your fucking opinion and not mine. Maybe I should have made, maybe, may, you know you know what, God, maybe I'll go steal the next Soundgarden CD. How's that sound? Well, if you thought that that was going to lead to some sort of productive life or put your children through college, then I would say go for it. I find that example look, don't to be tell me very what, look, 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 look. Don't tell me what to do with me, okay? You do what you do with you. You go out you have a good life. This Friday night, I'll be at NWA Pro South in Piedmont, Alabama. This Saturday, I'll be at Peach State Wrestling Alliance where I have, you know, quite a trick up my sleeve and ask Mike Jackson about the third-degree burn that I put on his chest when I threw a fireball in it, okay? And how much did he, how much did he get paid to have third-degree burns on his chest? Do okay, I do this shit? Is, we're getting off track. Um, I don't think anyone that's that, currently that on this. Sh- a com- wouldn't that make him no. a complete idiot? Oh, Lord have mercy. 
No one that's on the show right now is guilty of being a a mark that's putting themselves over and starting a promotion just to be champion or any of the stuff that we talk about almost every week here. And we're running out of time, so I did have some particular things I wanted to talk to Wicked Nemesis about, and he brought it up just now with uh, Peach State. Uh, So, yeah, we've talked a lot about what's going on in PWA over the last few weeks, and uh, we've had the uh, exotic ones on here. And uh, So, anyway, I think anyone who listens to the show regularly knows what's going on there. So what is going on with you uh, this Saturday, and then I guess a week later they're having their big anniversary show. Um, after what happened two weeks ago, or a week and a half ago, Enoch, you were arrested and somehow you got out of jail and you were back by the end of the show. And, uh, you know, everyone was up in arms about how you got back and everything. So what can you tell us about this uh, this Saturday show? Well, now that I have five minutes, uh, I guess to say what I need to say <laughs> <laughs> I have something planned. I have something planned, and uh, I guess I should cut the the Mark promo. Yada yada yada, blah blah blah. Who gives a shit? I I'm gonna take over Peach State Wrestling Alliance, plain and simple. And I don't give a shit if Davy Richards is there. I don't I don't care who's there, okay? Because it's all about me and the merchants of death, plain and simple, okay? Anybody that wants to come and be on the card, that's fine. Just don't get in our way. The exotic ones. You pulled your little shenanigans, and I love how the fact that somehow my email had Chris Knox referred to as Mike Knox. Priceless. <laughs> Simply priceless. I noticed, I noticed that, too. <laughs> and, you know, and it's the little things like that. If you're going to sell it, make sure you really sell it. So, But, you know, being the oracle of ominous, the architect of intellect, if you will, it doesn't matter what happens because – if I'm managing the judge, if I'm managing Danny only and the prophets of doom again, if I'm managing the merchants of death, it doesn't matter. Hold on, let me get a drink of my crunk juice, my citrus crunk juice. Danny, you know this all too well. Mm. That's some good shit. No matter what <laughs> happens, and I don't care who's on the card, guess who's headlining it? Crew Jones against Bull Buchanan. And I'm going to allow, because I respect Bull, I'm going to allow... Bull Buchanan, the same opportunity that we allowed Johnny Swinger. Just walk away. Just quit. Let us go into the June 2nd show, event, card, what have you, and let us just do what we do. Stay out of our way. Crew Jones is going to continue to be the Heritage Champion. CJ Awesome and J-Rod are going to continue to be the Tag Team Champions. And Chris Knox, the unlucky charm Chris Knox, not Mike Knox, is going <laughs> to continue to be undefeated. And you guys saw how he manhandled Mike Jackson. Hankins, you were there. Williams, you were there. Danny, God, I wish you were there to see that. He beat the shit out of Mike Jackson. Beat Mike Jackson. And, and when, even when he tried the old school, caught him in the bear hug. You can reach me at Wicked Nemesis on Twitter, Wicked Nemesis Enoch on YouTube. You guys love my, love my YouTubes. Wicked Nemesis Enoch, the Syrian fan page. Video, VO daily, daily motion blogger blogspot. I'm I'm everywhere. I'm omnipotent, and make sure you address me as such. Well, hey, um, I want to ask you also about uh, you. You work with Pandora in uh, in the various promotions. Like Pandora, but, right? She is the women's champion. I forget the exact name of the title in Alabama Championship Wrestling. Um, but since she won the title, I don't think she's had a chance to defend it. So do you know what's going on with that? Oh, yeah. Uh, Album Chip Chip Wrestling fired everybody. They decided that they didn't want uh, PCW people there, and they didn't want me there. So they fired everybody from Pro South, and all the people that got kept were Joey Sartain. And uh, and you know what it was? I wouldn't cater to the fans. They had their little hill sector because Team All You Can Eat makes the, makes the wrestlers better. If you're on somebody... Because they're sucking, that's one thing. And they got mad because I said that Team All You Can Eat was how uh, Hill, quote-unquote, Hill fans should be by making the wrestlers better. And I felt like if they continued how they were, bringing out the red carpet, bringing their own security guards and, all, and such and such, that they were going to take away from the fans, or they were going to take away from the matches. And they and were they doing do. all of my fans. And they did. And they, you couldn't get and they did. over in there because they wouldn't, they wouldn't abide by the rules of the industry. Yeah, there's... We're loud, we're obnoxious, we say a lot of things. But at the end of the day, we play by the rules. 
and they were there to put themselves over as opposed to enjoying a good wrestling show, and it was problematic, and you had every right to be pissed off with them because there was a whole three-quarters of the crowd that were growing tired of it, and it was going to hurt you in the long run, so you did what you had to do. And and the whole March event, guys, you'll love this entire March event, was the whole pictures that were up were nothing but pictures of them. The only video that got put up was of them dancing with their security guards. That was it. <laughs> well, hey, we've got a caller from, looks like from Birmingham. We've only got a couple minutes left, but this person has been trying to get through, so I'm going to see who it is. Thanks for calling George Wrestling Now. Who do we have on the line? Can you hear who I am? I hear you. I don't know who you are, though. I'm Action Mike Jackson. I've been sitting here listening to this nemesis talk for about another 15 or 20 minutes. Does he ever get tired of running that big mouth of his? I only had five minutes to talk, Mike. I only had five minutes to talk. I don't have very long, and what i got to say is going to be short and sweet. Let me recap Nemesis all up. Now, he's talking all this trash and telling all these people this and that. And Let me tell you the truth of the thing. Nemesis came to Peace State Wrestling. He wanted to buy Peace State Wrestling. Shane knows, knew he had a great thing, and he wouldn't sell it. So, so let me tell you what you did, Nemesis. You tried to underhand Shane knows. And when you tried to underhand Shane knows through the investigators, they found out the kind of trash that you really were, and then they had you arrested. So what you thought was, well, if I can't get to Shane Knows, let me get to the next best thing. Let me get to Mike Jackson. And what you did to me in Kelton, Georgia, a couple of weeks ago, you may think that's real funny. But when I signed that match with Chris Knox, your undefeated superstar, a guy that nobody could go in the ring over three minutes with, and when you were gone, supposedly, whatever happened there, and you got out on bail or whatever the case might be, and you came back and you watched that match from the back, you saw that Chris Knox, could be beat. And if you would have stayed out of there, I would have beat Chris Knox. Well, when that didn't work out, you sent all your goons out there. And not only did one of them, not only did two, not only three, not only four, but all five of you guys double team me, triple team me, quadruple team me, and almost beat me to death. I got a slight separation in the shoulder. And when that wasn't bad enough, and when that wasn't good enough for you, and you had to have more, you threw the fire on me. Well, let me tell you, you may think that's funny. And you may think that's the greatest thing since sliced bread, but let me tell you, I cannot wrestle for a while, but I promise the people and I promise every fan that I've ever known in my lifetime that I will be back on June the 2nd at the biggest anniversary show. I don't care who I wrestle, but Nemesis, it doesn't matter. I'm coming for you. I was the hunted, now I'm the hunter, and I'm going to promise the people it's time to get rid of you, Nemesis, and we're fixing to do it. And that's all i got to say. Where do you get a phone? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all he had to say, and he hung up. So, Where the hell uh, did I get a phone? I don't know. I guess someone probably let him borrow it. I figured he didn't send a message with smoke signal. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we're out of time, uh, but uh, we will be back next week with uh, Shane Knowles, will actually be one of our guests from Peach State Wrestling Alliance. So we'll hear from him after whatever happens this Saturday. Uh, We will also have someone from Monstrosity Championship Wrestling because they will be back at the Monster Bash at the Starlight Drive-In on June 3rd. And we may have someone from Atlanta Midget Wrestling, which will be in town on June 2nd. But um, still working on that one. (laughs) But before we go, Danny, uh, we have a new tradition what is Matt, I'll let you set it up. Fun facts with Danny only. Here's a fun fact for you. Maryland is a shithole. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and that has been your fun fact with Danny only. All right. Well, we'll be back next Monday. I believe uh, we'll have lots to talk about. Is Anarchy running this Saturday, Danny? Uh, uh, 26th, yeah. 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 So we've got a lot of shows. Anarchy, Peach State Wrestling Mark, Alliance. Danny Owens. Danny Owens a mark. I said Danny Owens a mark. I'm a mark. Yes, Mike Jackson is a mark. Everybody that's ever dreamed, you are a mark. You you suck yeah. dick. You're a sheeple. You're you're a mark. Danny Owens, you're a mark. Yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not. Thank you guys for having me on though for real. Stop being a mark. Thanks for calling. We'll see you Saturday, Mr. Mr. Enoch. And uh, until then, have a good week. 
We'll be back on Monday. Listen next week, people. Bye. Georgia wrestling fans, you're going to want to make your plans to be at Johnny G's the first, third, and fifth Sunday of every month, 2 p.m. bell time for Rampage Pro Wrestling Television taping. And fans, if you're in Middle Georgia, make sure that you watch Rampage Pro Wrestling on Fox 24, Saturday 9 a.m. on the My 41.2, Saturday at 10 p.m. Cox Communications Cable, Thursday 8, Saturday at noon, and of course, Rampage Rewind, the one-half-hour show on Cox Communications throughout the schedule. Fans, be there. Do you remember Tommy Rich? What about Ray Gunkel or Gordon Soley? We thank you for listening to this broadcast. A production brought to you by GeorgiaWrestlingHistory.com and the GWH Radio Network. Stay tuned to GWH for nostalgia, upcoming events, and more. As always, GeorgiaWrestlingHistory.com thanks you for your continued support.